So Siri, question. When I first heard you speak back in the day in San Diego, when you were in, in the space and place of um, preparing, I think it was originally for the Olympics, is that correct? Yes. So would you mind just like highlighting for a minute or two all that you did in preparing for the Olympic trials, the coaching, the regimentation, the modeling, how committed you were and how much of your life force you invested in that process. Yeah, and like I said, you know, any great feat is demands of you everything you have in your heart and your soul. It demands you prioritizing your life in a way that, you know, what we focus on is what is going to grow, what is going to become the best part of our life. So, I mean, the first thing I did is I, I moved out to Australia because that's where the best athletes in the world uh, lived and trained, left my family, left my animals, left my home, lived in a tiny one room apartment that it was me, a bed, a table, a fork, a knife, a spoon, a bowl and a plate and like 5,000 cockroaches. Oh. And <laughs> just disgusting. <laughs> and I enlisted a coach. Um, so this is a little bit of a different story because the Olympic trials were my biggest failure, if you want to call it that, but also the biggest learning experience. And I'll tell you why it was a failure. It was a failure because I am someone who thrives on love. I thrive on connection. I thrive on having people around me and doing things every day that make me feel alive. Yet I hold myself up in this one room apartment and decided that I had to do this alone, that somehow like achieving that making the Olympic team was going to require me doing everything on my own. Now I had a coach, but he lived in another country, trained all day, you know, ate just everything I ate was pristine, showed up on race day. I had Did you, Sarah, didn't you even wash your food? Do I remember that correctly? Like you're washing your no, food. I don't know where that came from, Sean. I actually, I, I don't know where that came from. I did not wash my food, although I did, for example, maybe this means washing your food. You know, I would buy a rotisserie chicken and take all the skin off of it and like squeeze the fat out of it. So yes. That, okay. That, that's okay. That was, I, I misremembered that piece, but yes, you, you were taking the skin off and squeezing all the, yes, that I, I remember it was something to do with like that. That is unbelievable. Yes. Community. And I mean, yep. I would not touch anything. Again, it goes down to that question, like, will drinking this glass of wine take me one step closer to making the Olympic team or one step further away? And if it was going to take me further away, I didn't do it. So I was just pristine in everything I did. I even every night visualized the perfect race from start to finish, everything going absolutely perfectly the way it had to for me to cross the line and make the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Big mistake. Because on that day, first five minutes, get dunked under the water, elbowed in the face, kicked. And when I come up for air, the front pack was gone. And I had not visualized this. So I had no response. I froze. Mm. And I was going as hard as I could, but I'm going backwards. People are passing me. I get on the bike. People are passing me. And I quit. Yeah. The Olympic trials, I quit. But here's the thing in that moment moment of your greatest defeat or, or, or disappointment or embarrassment, you need to ask yourself, if I make an excuse, because people are going to come up and say, hey, are you injured? Are you sick? Did you have a flat tire? I knew that if I made up an excuse, that would be it for me. I wouldn't make it any higher than where I was then. But if I owned it, I would maintain my self-respect and I would have the eyes and the wherewithal inside myself to learn from what happened so that that would make me better. Mm -hmm. So the first person that asked said, hey, what happened? I said, I choked. I just, I envisioned, I visualized a perfect race 365 nights in a row. And when something went wrong, I had no response. So that happened. But again, this, I, I compare this moment to that moment in college where I was ready to take my own life. And in this moment, I'm in this deep depression because it was a be all end all. I had made it the be all end all. 
And in that moment, I thought, okay, how did I get myself out of this is what my book is all about is figuring out, you know, what, how, what took place in order for me to get to where I am now. And I thought the first thing that I did is I changed my focus. What am I focusing on now? I'm focusing on how far I have to go. I've got to wait another four years. But instead, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. Oh my God, six years ago, I didn't even know how to swim. <laughs> what a freaking miracle. Here I am on the start line of the Olympic trials when I didn't even know how to swim six years ago. This is unbelievable. Suddenly I'm filled with this gratitude and I'm thinking, God, I am so sorry that I have not been, you know, laid witness to the miracles that have happened. Mm -hmm. So instead I'm feeling grateful. So then I'm in a state where I can think about what do I need to change? And this is where it really started happening, Sean.